fatigue is a major issue for patients with Sjogren's syndrome. Up to 70 to 80 percent of the people would have disabling fatigue. And actually, fatigue is also a major symptom for many chronic inflammatory conditions and also non inflammatory conditions from cancer, COPD, and all kinds of things. So, you know, fatigue is clearly a major symptom in many chronic diseases. Yeah. Well, I think um, fatigue is a complex symptom and there are many different causes. And clearly, inflammatory processes have some contribution, but I believe that there are many other non inflammatory mechanisms also contribute to the symptom of fatigue as well. Well, I think first of all, we need to ask about it. Um, as one of the third speaker in the session we just mentioned earlier, we also needed to record them and we need to discuss with them. I think many people would just, you know, would be very, at least feel satisfied that people take the symptoms seriously. And then there are many other uh, contributing factors. Some of them are treatable, for example, if it's drug, anemia, some of the biological processes can be referred. And we just need to help people to understand, you know, what may be contributing to to, to the fatigue, for example, sleep, something can be done about it. And of course, if there's any disease that hasn't been fully controlled, they need to be fully controlled as much as we can. Um, so just to explain to people that, you know, there is something to do about it. Not necessarily cure it right away, but, you know, there's something positive about it. And, you know, we are still doing something to hopefully in the future, we can provide a much more effective treatment. So in some of our previous study, we, we observed that inflammatory processes not, cannot fully explain what's happening in the fatigue. We believe that in a chronic um, inflammatory state, something else will come in to regulate the immune system. And we think that the vagus nerve is a very good candidate, both in terms of connecting how we deal with stress and also you know, our, our various other symptoms that we previously reported. And of course, vagus nerve can also downregulate the inflammatory response. So we thought actually this would be a quite a good system to investigate. Well, we did um, a sub basic science study just really stimulating the vagus nerve using a non-invasive vagus nerve stimulating device and we're just wanting to see what happened to the body, what happened to the symptom and what we actually find not only can you suppress the in vitro um, stimulation of uh, pro-inflammatory cytokine, patients using the device also have significant improvement of the fatigue symptom as well. To me, I think it's potentially play an important role in, in both the um, pathological processes, but perhaps more importantly, it may play a role in the um, fatigue symptom as well. We know that in a lot of the um, uh, virus you know, stimulant um, infection, um, usually it's a triggering of the type 1 interferon or the interferon activity. So this RSLV is to targeting the initiation of it by destroying the circulating uh, nucleic acid. So because we think one of the ways to deal with the fatigue is to deal with the root of the problem. So instead of trying to break down the pathway in between when we still get a lot of unknown, but if we try to, 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 to target what happened, the triggering the initial information, maybe we can do something about it. So it is still a small study, only a phase two study of 30 patients, but what we find is that the people who treated with the RSLV-132, actually the mental fatigue symptoms significantly improved. And it is also substantiated by an objective measure of a neuropsychological test, which is often what people describe um, their, their problem with mental fatigue, i.e. low, you know, kind of slow reaction time, short term memory, etc. So, so the drug, of course, the primary measure really to see whether the, the, the strategy itself is actually you know, effective in uh, destroying the circulating uh, nucleic acid, which we show in one of the slides. In terms of fatigue, I, I, I suppose the, 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 it's just the way that the, the, the study are measured. So the fatigue itself, you know, going up and down, a bit of variability. So I, don't, I wouldn't take that particular um, you know, slide being there because it's not measuring the severity. It's just to say, do you still have fatigue? Because the, the format to capture the adverse event is just whether it's an all or none. So do you still have fatigue? So when they re report they still have fatigue, then it will be an adverse event. So it's not a comparison between whether their fatigue are better or worse, if you see what I mean. Oh, I think it's probably a bit too soon to draw any conclusion from a phase two clinical trial. I think we clearly need a biggest, well, you know, adequately power study to confirm the finding first before we can draw any conclusion. But I think the conclusion is that maybe, you know, there is some way that we could manage uh, fatigue and, you know, so we just need to go and continue to explore that. Oh no, I think it could potentially have a lot of importance in other conditions, you know, because interferon activity has been, you know, thought to play an important role in many autoimmune in, uh, rheumatic diseases, such as lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, so I think there will be a good, you know, potential for other diseases to maybe benefit from that as well. Well, I think we just needed to, to, to carry on doing the research and um, I think we'll eventually find some solution to it.